Hello and welcome to episode 53 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. This is Logan. Oh, what, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, he just appeared from under the table. <laughs> I think he wants another interview. Oh, are you going to do that first? or Yeah. Okay. So, who do you hope wins the championship tonight on Money in the Bank? I hope Bray Wyatt. Yes. Oh, wow. That change of heart. Um, what about John Cena? Nah. Even though you look He's just been... like him right now? No, he's been here too long. <laughs> and plus, when he just came, he was a rapper, and I didn't like that. Oh. Yeah, a lot of people don't like his rapping stuff. We were discussing this at SummerSlam. Bree and Nikki Bella is going to be in the room adjacent to us. How do you feel about that? I think you're just messing with me. When Brad first told him that, he got this solemn look on his face like, what? That was hilarious. <laughs> and then Brandon said, no, they're not staying in the room with us, just adjacent. We could go back and forth into each other's rooms. And he said, what about Daniel Bryan? And I said, oh, I told him he couldn't come. <laughs> and that's when he was like, I think you're messing with me. So is there anything you, else you want to add? Um, I wanted to ask you guys a question. Oh. You guys' favorite... Uh, your guys' favorite wrestler, Brandon first. CM Punk. Dad. Bray Wyatt. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Cesaro right now. Nice. All the same answers from episode 46. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm, I'm coming around on Bad News Barrett. He's becoming one of my favorite. Boom! He has a lot of personality and I like that. Yeah, Bad News Barrett is awesome. I've got two words for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got one last question for you. What? What's your favorite Nintendo game? Um, I would say Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Interesting choice. Waka, 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 waka. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite ghost on Pac-Man? I would say the blue one. You know his name? Mm-mm. Aww. -mm. Oh. Sue? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know their names either, do you? Blinky, I Pinky, knew there was like Blinky, and Winky, Winky and, Sinky or whatever. and Sue, but I think that's on Ms. Pac-Man. Yeah, I've never heard of Sue. <laughs> so, uh, do we want to talk about Money in the Bank right now? So, what do you guys think about Ambrose joining the contract? It's kind of cool. Do you think that's a huge plan for Rollins to get Ambrose in so that he could turn on Triple H? Oh, wow. No. No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's too soon. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's thinking a little bit too much in there right now. Uh, hopefully, I, I want anyone to win the championship except for Roman Reigns and Sheamus. <laughs> so who else is in the championship? Cesaro? Kane. Cena, Orton. Bray Wyatt. I think that's it, right? Yeah. And Sheamus and uh, Reigns. I thought there were eight. Is there eight? Because Kane was the oh, Kane, Kane was, was the eight. eighth, huh? Not it's not RVD because a lot of the mid cards Is are in the Ziggler. Isn't that one or the other? He's one? in the other one. Mm. And I don't know. Not bad news, Barrett. He's in the other one. Also. Remember they had Cena, um, Roman Reigns, and Sheamus on one team, and then they had yeah. I was trying. To, I was Orton, thinking of it that way. Orton, as well. Bray, Bray. Uh, Oh, is it Del Rio? Del Rio. Yeah. Yep. I don't want Del Rio to win either. <laughs> I'd rather, I don't think he would. I'd rather him over Roman Reigns. I, I just don't like how Roman Reigns got this big old push right now just because he's so popular and he's a Rock's cousin or whatever. I think he's earned it. I don't think so. I think yet. every member of the Shield earned where they're at right now. I don't think Roman Reigns earned it. He has some cool, like, recognizable moves. So, I mean, if you have that... And in the wrestling world, you got to give it to him. I think, uh, Raw, like, Ambrose, his wrestling style stands out. Roman has some cool moves, but Seth, I don't really. He just has a blackout. I don't. Is that the foot stomp thing? Yeah. Well, he. There were a couple of matches where, like, he was flying all over the place. Yeah. Like, he would jump out of the ring one side, and then he'd get in the ring and jump out of the ring the other side, and that was kind of cool. Yeah, the those matches with the Wyatts are really good. Hopefully the Wyatts win tonight over the Usos, yeah. and then Bray wins, and then it's like a powerhouse. But I don't think they'll give it to Bray. 
I think they'll give it to Roman Reigns, Orton, or John Cena. I think it might be too soon for Roman Reigns right now anyway, still. I mean, we keep saying that, though. It seems like every pay-per-view, it's like, oh, it's too soon for Reigns. Oh, it's too soon for Reigns. Well, this is not going to be too soon. This is his first title shot, though, isn't it? I want to say he had another one, but I don't really remember, to be honest. I don't think he held the NXT championship, did he? It was Seth, that was Big E. Oh, let's talk about Big E and Rusev. I hope Rusev just kills Big E on purpose. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> I actually just watched that just before I came over here. I was watching SmackDown before I came over here. And I saw that bit. Uh, Rusev annihilated. Who was he fighting against? Sin Cara. Yeah, it was Sin Cara. <laughs> <Or> Sin Cara. <laughs> and then Big E came out and... For some reason, he adopted like a freaking Johnny Cochran or a Reverend. Uh, and the then we're going to go uh, <laughs> into the ring. What is that guy's name? The Reverend? The, the black Jesse Jackson. Al Sharpman. Sharpman. I was thinking of Sharpton, but <laughs> he, he adopted that accent all of a sudden just because he's trying to be more American. I don't That's know. annoying as hell. Yeah, it is really annoying. Biggie just needs to. Go I just back. hope, yeah, Rusev TNA. beats him in five minutes or less. Because he's been dominating I'm, everyone. It's, you know what? It should be the streak versus the streak. Bo Dallas against Rusev. Ooh, both NXT guys too. Yep. Yeah, I I just hope that they're giving Biggie a big push. He's probably going to beat Rusev, but I don't want him to. I think he's going to remain undefeated. I hope so. There's no because even before Biggie lost to him, like dramatically, it wasn't even close. Nick said something about. Mark Henry coming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I heard that. I think Mark Henry might be hurt again, though, because I haven't seen him for a few weeks. Him and Ziggler. Too much Popeye's chicken. <laughs> yeah, there's a joke that uh, about Rusev like, fighting every black person in the WWE, so Mark Henry naturally would be the next person to go up against. Maybe Naomi after that, who knows? Oh, man. <laughs> She'll like it, though. Oh, man. She'll like the accolade. <laughs> <laughs> you think Naomi's going to beat Paige for the Divas Championship? That's a that's a big one. I bet you Cameron's going to interfere and she blow it will. for... The, so it's the end of the Funkadactyls? Hope or, so. Yeah, Cameron's a B. And they're going to have to... I. Like, one of them is going to have to change their persona because they can't both be Funkadactyls and being rivals. I don't see that happening. Yeah. Like this S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, Roman Reigns adopted the theme song and they changed it. Did you see the name? Uh -uh. To, like, Reigns Supreme or something. Something weird. Oh, they changed the name of the song? Mm -hmm. And set from special op to something else? Yeah. That's funny. They incorporates Roman Reigns... Uh, name into the title and I thought that was pretty funny hmm. I like Ambrose's new theme how it starts off like a motorcycle right <laughs> did you have any tales of camping that you wanted to go over uh nothing too dramatic happened I mean it was all it was all good times so um what Brad's referring to uh my family and I went up to uh Calaveras where the uh Sequoia big tree Sequoias are and uh, we spent a few days up there. We were up there from Wednesday till today, Sunday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Four, like four and a half days, basically. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I took my dog up there. The dog was really good. He, the only time he barked was someone rode by on like a, on a golf cart because they, they uh, pick up the garbage uh, from a campsite in a golf cart. And one time I just spooked him and he got he barked at him. But that was the only time anyone ever heard anything from him. He's a really good dog. I love my dog. I actually gave him a big bath uh, when I got home today. He was hating life, but <laughs> he's all clean now. Um, we went to uh, the Mercer Caverns, mm -hmm. uh, which Brandon and I went to shoot over 10 years ago now when we were in uh, American River College together. And was it like a biology class? or uh, Field biology. Field biology. Was that the one with the bear teacher? Yep, Joan Brentley Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough. So a student in that class now sits two cubicles down from me and really? I work. I don't remember any students from almost any college class. I <laughs> at, Throughout my, I was actually in college for five years. I didn't have to be in college for five years, but that's another story. 
I, I don't remember any one student from any class that I was ever in other than you, of course. <laughs> and the only reason why I knew him is because he would wear Dragon Ball Z shirts huh. like I would, and he had better ones than I did. I was like, where does he get these shirts? He had Piccolo ones, and I was so jealous. <laughs> and then just only only a few days ago, I've been working with the guy for like over a year. It just clicked. I was like... You took this field biology class in American River College. Like, well, that was over 10 years ago, but I guess so. <laughs> That's like Why is she one. called the bear teacher? Because she looks like a bear. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's tight. <laughs> that was funny because I think it was Mark Cook had the same teacher. Yeah. And that's how we like, we're like, oh, yeah, I took this biology class with a woman who looked like a bear. And we're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we went down to Mercer Caverns. That was fun. Um it goes 16 stories down, and uh, I was there with my daughter, she, three-year-old girl. She w she made it all the way down by herself, made it all the way back up by herself. I was really proud of her. Didn't cry at all, no whining. I mean, she said, I, I'm hungry a couple times, but that's about it. So I was really proud of her. She did really good. Uh, the next day, we went to this lake um, that was close by. It was actually a reservoir, uh, but that was a lot of fun. The kids, you know played around the shallow water that's pretty much all that day was the next day we went to the the big tree state park which was really cool we got some cool pictures with the kids uh hanging out in the lower sections of the trees you could just see how massive they are they're like five times the width of any human being it's, it's really crazy uh if you ever have a chance to go there i definitely recommend it they also have redwoods up the coast but the uh there's basically only three spots in the world where you see these trees this size. Uh, it's up the coast of Northern California and Central California where I was at. And I think there's also a, um, a grove in China from what I read. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty cool stuff. Uh, and then today we left. Uh, we did spend a lot of time playing games. Like, have you ever played a game called Cornhole? Is that when you throw the bag? The, the bean bags yeah. into the little hole. Yeah. Played a lot of that. Uh, I wasn't very good at it, so I didn't play a whole lot. I, I played the X-rated game of that. <laughs> no description needed. <laughs> uh, we also played a game called Mexican Horseshoes. Have you ever heard of that? No. no. Mexican Horseshoes is heck of fun. You can come up with any sort of wicked ideas you want. I don't know why it's called Mexican Horseshoes. Basically what it is is uh, two platforms that are maybe six feet apart from each other. And each platform is like a long rectangle, let's say five feet by one or two feet. And then there's three holes in the back of each pla uh, each platform. The first hole is worth one point, second hole is worth three points, and the third hole is worth five points. So it's basically played like horseshoes where you, you, you throw these little washers, you try to get them into the hole, and then the second person gets a chance to make them into the hole as well. Uh, so if the second person ma makes it into any hole that the first person had made it into, it just cancels out the score. And if uh, you know if no no scores have been canceled out, then they all obviously add on to the total score. The fun part about the game was that there's a lot of strategy involved. Uh, you're playing to 21, but if you go over to 21, you go all the way back down to zero. Oh, okay. So not only can you mess yourself up, but you can mess your opponent up because a lot of times if you're throwing the washers, they'll just sit there on the platform. You can try to like knock them into one of the holes or there's any number of ways that you can actually screw your opponent over playing this, this game. It's a really fun game. Um, do you remember Quentin? Yeah. My little cousin Quentin? Well, he's 16 now and he's like dorkier than I ever was. <laughs> it's so crazy. He's like all into Game of Thrones and he, he's talking about all these different computer programs that I've never heard of. So he and I formed a team. We, for, we referred to ourselves as the League, League of Dorks. <laughs> we went up against Mike Fowler and Matt Gerwer, who we uh, referred to as the Obscene Athletes. Oh, I was going to say the cool guy. <laughs> I don't know. Matt's a cool guy. I'm not so sure about Mike. Anyway, so we felt like we were the underdogs, but we, we took them down quite a few times. We were very proud of ourselves. And Quentin actually made some pretty clutch shots. So it was, it was a nice bonding moment between uh, Quentin and myself. Uh, Lots of good food. Uh, we uh, What we do when we go camping is we assign a dinner to each family uh, for each night of the week that we're there. Uh, we had burritos last night that were made by my aunt and uncle. Uh, the night before that, we had um, 
like these really good sausages that were uh, made by some deli in um, Lockford. I guess they're like world famous. And then the night before that, shoot, what did we have the night before that? Uh, I can't remember, but it was it, it was all good, all good stuff. I, if you ever go camping with a large group of people, that's a really good way to do it. So you don't have to worry about making dinner every night. You just make it one night, and you just make it for the entire group. It's it's really cool. easy that way, and you al you always come up with really good food too. So yeah, all good times, uh, no complaints. Cool, fun stuff. You guys ever go camping? Mm. Last uh, time I, went I went camping with you, like that was about ten years that ago. That was the last time I've been camping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Ryan? No. no? Uh, Have Karen, you ever been at all? Yeah, I've been before, um, but Karen always wants to go, and I just don't like. We never had the chance, but I uh, this year I think we're planning on going down in the San Francisco area somewhere. That's cool. She found some place. It's nice to go to the coast because it's not quite yeah. so hot. Uh, we actually got kind of lucky. It wasn't too hot up there. Um, the year before that, uh, this is another thing we do with my family. Each family like takes a turn organizing the trip because we usually go on a trip every year. Yeah. Last year was my year, and we uh, organized a camping trip up to Fort Bragg, which is right on the coast. We were like literally on the beach. It was really nice weather. I loved it. Some people cool. complained that it was too cold. But oh, I, was, I was like, dude, it's summertime. It gets up to... The hundreds in Sacramento. Don't complain about it being too cold. How far is Fort Bragg? It's like three and a half, four hours away. It's Sounds pretty cool. far. Good. So if it's 50 degrees outside, I'm happy. Yeah. It, it was amazing. I, I really loved that trip. So, yep. All good. Game of the week. Yeah, before we get into this treasure hunting, we've got a real big score for you guys. Brandon's got like 14 or 15 items. I've got one good one. So uh, let's go ahead and get Game of the Week out of the way. Game of the Week, Ghosts and Goblins. Oh, no. <laughs> Ghosts and Goblins was amazing. At, at the first day I started playing it, I, I grew to love this game. It was so fun. I just have four key points that I wanted to go over with you guys. Uh, first one is the Red Demon. Yeah. He, this guy, this enemy is flying around the screen, hitting you all over the place. Before you hit him, he's got this heck of pissed off look on his face and he's looking in the opposite direction of you. It's like a, a snide expression, like he, like hit me. He's just daring you to hit him. Uh, the way I took him down is I would hit him twice and then just as he flies up in the air and he comes to swoop down, I would jump away and turn around and hit him two more times. It takes four hits to kill him. Uh, if Sometimes it's a little tricky, but the majority of the time I got him. You have to fight four of those guys in level 3-2. It's crazy. The second one is the tough guys. We've talked about th these guys yeah, before. Yeah, with the tattoos. They power at you as soon as they look at you. Uh, and if they get close to you, there's no way you could outrun them. They run faster than Arthur. They throw cannonballs at you. So you just got to hit them and just keep hitting them. Don't let up. There's 9 to 10 hits to kill them. The next one is probably my most hated aspect of the game. It's called invisible damage. <laughs> you'll be walking through the game and you'll just get hit by nothing. What? It's a glitch. It, it happens on the second part of the game. That's crazy. On the first part of the game, it happens at this one spot on the end of level 3 before you get to the dragon. If you just keep running towards the, the game, it'll hit you. The, you have to stop and slow down and do like inch your way towards the dragon. But in the second part of the game... They'll hit you all over the place. It's random parts. You'll just lose your armor and you'll be sitting there vulnerable. Can you die that way? Yes, you could die that way. Did you um, did you give it that name, Invisible Damage, or did you look it up to see if no, it's a common occurrence? That I gave it that name. Okay. So I looked it up afterwards and people were calling it like Poison Damage or something, and I just called it Invisible Damage. But other people have experienced yeah. it, though? Wow. Um, the last part is level 6. This is when shit gets real. You start off having to fight a unicorn boss. After you beat him, you fight a dragon, and you're climbing up the tower towards Lucifer. Um, the hardest part of the level is when you climb the ladder of death. I call it this because as you approach the ladder, you see a tough guy hanging out, running across the screen, with a red demon sitting right by him, <laughs> on the same floor. Plus, you have skeletons down in the ground. If you get close to them, they pop out and hit you. So... 
I found out that if you climb up three quarters of the way up the ladder, the red guy comes after you. So you go back down, you kill him real quick. Then you have to beat the tough guy and the skeletons coming out. Then you have to fight two Lucifer devils. The Lucifer devils are the ones who capture... It, I guess her name is Prin Prin. Mm -hmm. It's not Gwendolyn or Guinevere. Uh, they capture her in the beginning, you know, the guy up in the air. So you have to fight two of those guys, which those guys aren't that hard because uh, as they swoop at you, if you jump, they'll just keep going where you're at. They won't, like, come and follow you. So you fight two of those guys, then you fight Satan, which is the easiest boss in any game I've ever played. Uh, it's a whole new level, so once you beat the two Lucifers, you could have spend as many lives as you want on him. But you just uh, hit him in the head like 20 times and he's dead. You have to have the cross to beat the game. Did you know that? The cross weapon, it's a shield. Oh, I just thought you needed the bracelet. No. To, if you don't, if you get to Satan and you don't have the cross weapon, which you get, you get it in level six, you go all the way back to level five. Hmm. And yeah, so you have to keep that cross. That happened to me the first time I played through it. But, uh, very hard game. I'm glad I beat it. It's, it's awesome. So let's get in this treasure hunting. Oh, yeah. Went to Denio's yesterday. Got there around 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I, the night before I asked Jamil, I said, you want to go to Denial's with me, go to treasure hunting? Me thinking she's going to say no, she agreed to it. So I was like, oh man. <laughs> uh, I, I was like, I, I won't be able to like, run around like I usually do. So, because you know, she likes to stop and shop. So we get there and we walk in and there's a bunch of dresses at this one shop. And I just keep walking. Naja came with us. I kept walking, and I turn around. And they're looking at the dresses, and I said the most dickish thing in the world to her. I said, "This stuff will be here forever. My stuff won't." <laughs> and she's like, "So the junk that gets thrown on the floor won't be there forever?" I said, "No, it won't." Lots of good stuff. Anyways. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we go, and then first vendor, older lady, half Russian with a slight accent. I uh, looked like half Russian, half white. Uh, she had a few PlayStation games. One of them was Metal Gear VR Missions, worth about nine bucks. I say, how much for this? She said, four dollar, four dollar, <laughs> four dollars. Yeah. I said, okay, and I'm looking. I'm like, will you take three? And she said, no, not my game. I was like, not my game. Yeah. I said, okay. I didn't want to like question. Did you steal this game or what? <laughs> so I was like. I'm not paying four dollars for this game. I put it down, and I would go to another vendor who has a, like a bunch of CDs and a few PlayStation games. Uh, this one guy, uh, I'll call my my antagonist in this trip. He had Twisted Metal Two in his hand for PlayStation, and he was like, "How much for this?" And the lady said, "Oh, four dollars." So I was like, oh, this guy's a treasure hunter. <laughs> so I went past him and was like going through all the other ones, like skipping him because he already had that spot camped out. So I wanted to get ahead of him. So he puts the game down and he looks at me and then he goes down another aisle. <laughs> so I look at him and then he looks at me and then he just like runs away, like down like a couple more aisles. Like he just missed all this. He's going to try to get ahead of me. But that's fine. I go back to the lady with Twisted Metal 2. And I said, um, how much for this game? And then she said, $4. All right. I put it down. Uh, and then uh, rummaged through some of the cases and found a bunch of CD cases. like people, The cases that people hold CDs in. The single CDs. So this is my first score. Is it complete, or is it just the game? Uh, one complete, and then just single discs, a few of them. Twisted Metal 2, the game you just started talking about. Yeah. How much is that worth? Twelve. Wow. I'll go over how much I paid for it after the, I reveal this. Willie Sutton. I just put those in the, in the case. <laughs> oh, there's mul multiple? Yeah. Oh, Mega Man 8 Anniversary Collection and Fantasy Star Online? Psh. 
And then there's one more. That's hecka tight. Too bad this wasn't for Dreamcast. Uh, Saturn. Metal Slug 4. Cool. So. Uh, uh, you want to see how much they're worth? Yeah, I was going to do that and how much I paid for them. Uh, so, Twisted Metal. I got that. Mega Man 8. Fantasy Star. Online. And Metal Slug 4. All for $8. Twisted Metal is worth 12 Mega Man's worth 10, Fantasy Star 8, and then uh, Metal Slug is worth 5. I thought it was going to be worth more, but it's not. I thought this would have been worth more. Yeah, it's like 8 to 10. Oh. Maybe, oh, it's for GameCube going that's worth mm -hmm. more. That's why. My next vendor is a rocker dude. Wait, can I get, get, reveal my treasure? Oh, sure. I bet you thought this was just a pile of socks, Nick. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Check this puppy out. Kodeka? Kaudelka. Okay. <laughs> it's a horror RPG set in the 19th century. Oh, wow. It's really cool. It plays like Resident Evil 2, like the view of it, but it's random battles, so you it'll take you to a battle, and you'll fight monsters, and you could walk up to them. It's like a gem fire where you have to advance squares, but not so big. It's like a 16 by 16 grid. So you move up to the enemies and hit them and stuff. It's a real fun game. Huh. Worth $35. Hmm. Never heard of it before. That's the one when I went and saw the all the role-playing games. And I saw this one, and that one was worth the most. Huh. Okay, my, my next vendor was a rocker dude. Uh, he's, I said, you have any video games? He's like, yeah, I've got a few in that bin. So he's talking to me, saying he has a Contra. He has all these Nintendo games, but he's keeping these. Keep, keeping those at home. The, these few, he starts talking to me about this game called Def Jam Fighting for New York. Have you heard of that? With the rappers? Yeah. You get to pick rappers and you fight them against yeah. each other. Yeah. And so he was telling me you get to throw Carmen Electra into a train and <laughs> all this stuff. And I was like, uh, um, okay, well, I'll pick this game up. How'd you want for this game? He's like, $2. Oh, Metal Gear Solid. Tight. Worth, ele worth 11. Cool. Did you want to show Nick those other ones real quick? Oh, yeah. Did you see the treasure hunting page? Uh, the the one where you said something about an RPG gamer's wet dream? No, nope, this, this is the one for today. Oh, I'm still up today, huh? So Brad and I went to Dimple today and came across these lovely games. Castlevania. Just the, the original, right? Yep. Oh, Final Fantasy, the original. And Contra, the original. Cool. Yeah, it was crazy. We went in there, and I was like, Final Fantasy grabbed it. Brad was like, Castlevania. <laughs> just crazy. Huh. But yeah, these were only four ninety nine. Tight. They didn't get the collector's nine ninety nine sticker on them. So then uh, I go to my fourth vendor after I buy Metal Gear, uh, and this guy has just a bunch of just old Nintendos just sitting everywhere. He was there last time, just this huge vendor. Uh, he had junk everywhere, so I was looking through this one bin, I was like, he's got to have Nintendo or game something, and he had Ninja Turtles 2 for PlayStation, he had a copy of that Death Fighting Jam single disc, I was like, what the heck's up with this game? And then so he really didn't have anything, so I'm like, whatever. Um, that's when Jamila called me, so I was talking to her and hang up. I'm like, let me let me look up this Def Jam fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> Def Jam fight for New York. Is that the case? That's or, or is that two copies? Two copies. Awesome. 32 and 22 So much it's worth? Yes. How much did you pay for it? $2 for this one, $3 for this one. Awesome. I was like, are you kidding me? I ran back to that guy. I was like, I think I'll take that game. He's like, all right, two bucks, man. Huh? <laughs> so then I go back to this guy. I'm like, how much is that? Uh, three. I was like, that's cool. I, I, whatever. And then he goes, 
you want any more games? I said, well, I wanted this Ninja Turtle one, but it didn't have the book. He's like, what about this? He had this huge, long cardboard box. He opened up the lid. Nintendo games. What? Yes. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, I asked him if I could take a picture. He said no. (laughs) So I was like, looking, looking. Did you ask him how much, or were they individually listed? No, they weren't. I said, I did. I said, I was like, uh, different, different, different. I said, all right. So I grabbed these. Tiny Two Adventures Two: Trouble in Wacky Land. Double Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Battle Toads. <laughs> oh, Chip and Dale. 1942. Jeez. Ninja Turtles. So. Is this all your treasure? Yeah. So, for. Guess how much he wanted for all of these? He wanted $45 for all of those. Oh, wow. What? This is worth five. This, 1942, is worth eight. Rescue Rangers. Uh, 10. Ten. Battletoads, 15. Double Dragon, 9. Tiny Toons, 9. So he said, Double Dragon, 10. Battletoads, 10. He said, 45. And I said, I was doing the math in my head. I was like, there's no way I could pay $45 for all this. And then so I was like looking around and he was like, um, 35. And I said, I can't do 35. Maybe if you let me take a picture of all these games, and he's like, uh, he's, he's like, he was counting, he's like, six, uh, five dollars each, thirty dollars. I said, no. And then he, like, kind of walked away, and he's like, I like I've got twenty-five. He's like, okay, I'll do twenty-five. So I got, so that brings a grand total of forty dollars spent making modestly 155 plus the dragon ball cards that we got today yeah so that was my treasure hunting why the fuck is this art excuse me why the heck is this i have def jam game worse i have no idea it looks horrible it is it's really bad it's a really bad fighting game (laughs) i i didn't want to look online like spend too much time on it but it yeah, it really looks like a bad game. <laughs> he, this guy really tried to sell me on it. He said, you could create your own character. <laughs> your f- your friend could create his own character. And then you put your memory cards in the same PlayStation. And you guys could fight. <laughs> he said, Snoop Dogg's the main villain. Maybe that's why. Maybe, but... And that and you could kill Carmen Electra. <laughs> <laughs> then I wanted to talk about this other vendor lady. I didn't buy anything from, but she had a lot of games. Uh, I just felt completely overwhelmed because she had so much to go through, and I just like picked out a few that I thought were worth something. Uh, she had PlayStation 2, PlayStation Genesis, N64, a bunch of these games. So out of everything I saw, I picked up Resident Evil Director's Cut mm-hmm. for PlayStation, uh, Final Fantasy IX, uh, and as I was rummaging through all these games, her little dog was sniffing my butt to no end. You stop and, its foot? <laughs> no, I didn't. I had, shoes, <laughs> I had shoes on. But I was like, I don't care. I'm just, I have to look through these games. And then, uh, I picked up like Chameleon Twist for N64 and some other random game. The only ones that I, and I asked her too, I said, how much for these games? She said, uh, between two and five dollars. I said, okay. So I bring up Resident Evil and Final Fantasy IX. She's like, oh, this Resident Evil is a director's. It's got more than one disc. I'm going to have to charge 10 for that one. Uh, it's only worth 20 And then Final Fantasy... You broke it. And then, like in front of her. <laughs> and then Final Fantasy... There, it only has one disc now. And Final Fantasy IX, I think, is worth around 12 Yeah, it's not that much. And she wanted 10 for that one, so she wanted 20 for the, both games. I said, I don't want this Final Fantasy, but I'm interested in this Resident Evil. Will you take 8? And she's like, no, I can't do 8 for Resident Evil. It's a good game. Like, she knows Resident Evil. You should have asked her who the last boss was. <laughs> I should have, but I was like, I'll do 8. She's like, no, I can't do it. I, I, I was like, I can't do it then. Bye. And 
she did have this big box of a Sega Genesis with a bunch of games for ninety five dollars. I didn't want to. I just was too rushed and didn't want to spend all the time researching all the games in front of her. So I was like, that all right. Maybe you'll be here next weekend because I think Brad and I are going to go next weekend and tear it up. But that was my treasure hunting excursion. Did you look at all the people who were on this game? No. Danny Trejo is on there. Oh, man. Oh, he did tell me that. The guy. <laughs> he told me Danny Trejo. I was like, oh, wow. Uh, Henry Rollins is on there, too. That's heck of funny. <laughs> is 50 Cent? Um, I don't think so. Oh, he has his other game. I think it's called Bulletproof. Mm. Prodigy? I don't know if that's the, the, band? the fire starter guy yeah. or not. Maybe that's some hip-hop artist. I really don't know. So that'll do it for this episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. This is Logan. Say happy hunting. Happy hunting.